I'm John Brannigan on the Solutions Architecture team here at Mapbox, and I want to thank you all for joining us today to hear more about how Xerian improves user workflows with Maps. Uh, with me, uh, we have Ben Ray, uh, Product Manager at Xerian Software, who will talk about how Xerian integrates Mapbox technology into iForm Builder, their enterprise data collection software. Uh, before we get started, just a few housekeeping notes. The webinar console you see is completely customizable, so you can move or resize windows, drag the corners, uh, make slides a little bigger, whatever you want. Also, this webinar is being recorded, so you'll get an email tomorrow around this time uh, with the link, and uh, then you can watch or share the recording. And lastly, we want to hear from you. So if you have questions for Ben, um, anytime through the, the presentation, you can ask it using the Q&A window, and we'll cover the questions at the end. So here is the agenda for today. Um, I'll start off with a brief introduction of the Mapbox platform, and then uh, let Ben go with the uh, introduction to the iForm Builder platform, uh, discussion of how Mapbox was a good fit, um, the importance of mapping in field service operations, followed by a demo, and then a live QA. Okay, so what is Mapbox? Um, Mapbox is a location data platform for mobile and web applications. So our, our products are building blocks that add location-based features such as maps, search, and navigation into mobile and web applications. Mapbox enables 1.6 million developers globally, reaching more than 600 million monthly active users. So every day, these devices, uh, the user devices, generate 71 billion total miles of anonymous aggregated sensor readings. And we use that to deliver precise traffic data and live up-to-date maps. Mapbox is changing the way people move around the world and experience daily life. Like these are just a few of the apps powered by Mapbox, including Snap, Lonely Planet, Tableau, Red Bull, Weather Channel, and Hotels.com. So I'm, I'm happy to introduce Ben Ray of Xerian Software, who will speak about how Xerian integrates location into their applications. Thanks a lot, John, for the introduction. Um, we've you know, been following Mapbox over the years. It's really been great to see kind of how they've, uh, how they've, they've improved and, and where they're at now. Um, so you know, just, just to start out, I want to just do a quick introduction. Um, my name's Ben Ray. I work you know, at, at Xerian Software, creators of, of iForm Builder. You may have heard of it known as that. Um, I've worked in a variety of different departments in, in the company here, ranging from customer success, a little sales, um, and you know, kind of found my way in, in the product space. Um, and I've really been able to see how, how Mapbox um, you know, has changed, changed the way things work, um, but then even just maps inside of, of our application. Um, so you know, we have a variety of customers who, who use maps um, all the time. Um, so you know, we actually went from uh, simple form building to really optimizing mobile business workflows. Now, when I mean simple form building, I mean you go online and you basically build out um, you know, your customized form and dispatch that out to the device. Um, back in 2010, with the introduction of the iPhone, um, we've actually first, you know, first released our application and um, you know, really started to take off from there. Um, now we are on the Google Play Store, um, we're on the App Store on, on iOS, and we're also on, uh, on, online on the web. Um, we have a web forms platform as well. Um, so I just I wanted to move over into our technology breakdown here. Um, you're going to see we have four core pieces of our uh, Xerian software product. Uh, first and foremost is iPhone Builder. Um, this allows you to create customized forms on the web, dis dispatch them out to your mobile devices, um, and then submit that data to the cloud for further processing. Um, we also have a documents platform that allows you to output customized documents. So these may be you know, PDF documents, Excel files. Um, and the big key there is that this outputs customized, let's say, OSHA documents that you may have. Um, there's a specific format that OSHA requires these documents to be in, and you can meet that. Um, so a variety of folks' clients have, um, have custom outputs that they want to, to put things on. So you know, we have a documents platform for that. 
Um, we also have a reporting platform. So when the data is submitted from your iPhone um, into the cloud, we can then you know, report on that information, such as uh, setting up custom graphs and dashboards and, and things like that. Um, and really what holds all this together is our data flow product. Um, if you're familiar with other tools that do you know, different types of ETL and stuff, you can compare it to that. Um, what actually happens is when data is submitted into it from iPhone Builder or any other systems, um, we can then process, transform, and refine that data um, and either write it to you know, reports, systems, to SQL servers, to a variety of other places. Um, so that's really been able to you know, let us customize these, these very complex workflows. Um, and something that is kind of unique across all of these is it, it runs JavaScript over top of all of them. So what that means is when you your folks are out in the field, you can have a customized form that you know, if this happens, do this, and, and, and break down lists to be more, more customized. Um, when you're transforming and processing the data in Dataflow, you can also you know, run reports and things on top of that. Um, and then even on the back end, when it goes into documents and reporting platforms, uh, you can also process and, and refine that information. So again, what this, this really does for folks is it allows them to, um, to have pretty customized workflows. And we work with a you know, variety of groups who, who do that. I'll get, I'll get to that here in just a minute. Um, one of the big things that we really believe sets us apart is, is we have um, available with all of our plans is our full service model. Um, and what that means is that we have our customer success team sit down with your team um, you know, once you start working with us, and we'll go over what your business workflow looks like, some current problems and challenges you have, and then figure out you know, how, how can we assist to, you know, to digitally transform this um, you know, in this day and age. So um, we'll go ahead and we will build all your forms. Um, in the past, this is this is, or sometimes is a burden for folks because they have to you know train someone and get them up to speed. Um, we include that with all of our plans. So again, building your reports, uh, building your workflows, and building your customized outputs. Um, what I'm going to show here in the demo later is is just one of those that we we have uh, have customized. Um, so here's a quick snapshot of some of our our customers here. Um, you know, as you can see, we work with a variety of customers in all different groups. Um, there's not really a, you know, a niche, niche market that we, we really appeal to here. But if you look at, um, you know, at the top left there, we have Yum, Yum Brands. So you may not have heard of Yum, but you've heard of KFC, Taco Bell, or Pizza Hut. Um, we work with them in the day in and day out doing uh, things such as fryer inspections all around the U.S. So they go out with their, their mobile devices, inspect their fryers to make sure they're compliant. Um, and they're safe and they're providing um, good quality, not overcooked, not undercooked um, products. Um, in the bottom right there, you see Cicada Seeds. They're one of the, the large um, research and field trial producers of, uh, of different types of seeds. And they do trials all the time. It's, it's really amazing to see, see this information come through of looking at different cauliflower and, and broccoli um, and seeing how they're, they're analyzing this day after day. Um, and then we do have a, a big, um, big presence in the NGO space. So, you know, groups like World Vision there you see at the bottom, um, they're doing different beneficiary registrations and a variety of surveys. Um, again, they're working in, in other countries and uh, where the you know, internet may not be as, as beneficial, um, and our product works offline and works, works great for them as well. So you know, there's just a small snapshot, um, and uh, it's really amazing to see what, what they're able to do um, with the product. So uh, next, I just want to move into talking a little bit about um, you know, why we went with Mapbox, how, how our process went. Because um, I know there is some other developers on the call as well, and folks may want to be implementing Mapbox. So just, I'll just share kind of our, our path to working with them. Um, so you know, typically in, in every product we build um, or every feature or functionality we build, we, we kind of start with the problem statement. Um, and you know, this, this one or a few customers had some problems. Um, they had a list of tasks that had to be completed all around the US. Um, big challenge was, was kind of figuring out where these tasks were and trying to see, you know, can we get these done in the right amount of time? How do we you know, send them to people who are gonna be in the same area? Um, all these challenges really you know, kept, kept stemming around location information. Um, so that was definitely one, one big thing. They wanted to get these things done. So you know, we kind of called that in a, a way to, they need a way to intelligently dispatch these jobs out um, and location being a huge part of that. Um, so that was one big, big issue. Um, and then another challenge was um, folks were really looking for basic map analysis. So some of the questions they kind of had were, you know, what, what jobs are currently done um, in what areas, right? Is, is this area need to pick up? Do we need to send more uh, resources out to this area to complete these tasks? Um, and that's something, you know, we, we quite frankly didn't have. They had to go to other providers to, to provide that. Um, and of course, you know, we would, we would like to provide more of those, those features and functionality. So, 
know, those are the two core problems um, that we wanted to to look at, and that's you know that's what we set out to solve. Um, so we started looking at a couple different providers um, on this, and ultimately we landed on Mapbox. Um, there's three core reasons we landed on Mapbox. Uh, first and foremost was that um, it was you know generally available on you know all of our all of our, our platform that we need, right? Which was you know, on the mobile side, that means iOS and Android, um, and on our website where folks can you know fill out forms on the web and analyze data on the web. Um, so you know it certainly ticked that box. Um, and then another one was you know we we have future development plans um, around three core things: offline maps, um, layers, and route planning. Um, there's a few others sprinkled in there, and we wanted to make sure whatever we pick is not good for just now, but you know good for for in the future. Um, so you know they they definitely tick that box as well. Um, seeing you know they've obviously had offline and layers for some time, and uh, I think within the last year they just added a, a route planning feature, which we're really looking forward to, to take advantage of in the future. Um, and then the last thing that you know you, you wouldn't really see it at face value, but was their outstanding customer support. Um, as we were developing this, um, most of our developers haven't worked too much with with map uh, centric workflows at all. So you know this was definitely a learning curve for us. Um, we hit you know challenges with with map clustering and some of the SDKs. Um, and you know when we had a challenge, we just just reached out to Mapbox. They had a solutions engineer you know hop on and show us you know how how to set this up. And uh, you know that was was really helpful. We were working with some of their their other APIs as well um, that we wanted to uh, you know, we need some help on. So they were able to uh, to provide that also provide that. So you know, big kudos to Mapbox on uh, you know really helping us out. That's something that definitely uh, you know sealed the deal for us. And uh, you know, look forward to see where you, you take things next. Um, so, you know, I wanted to just talk before I hop into the demo about why mapping is, you know, important specifically to us. Um, we're, you know, in the field service industry, and you know, at the micro level, field service is all about the, the geolocation. Um, you need to get to your job site to to complete whatever task you're working on. It may be work orders, inspections, surveys, audits, um, you name it. Um, so, you know, really, we want to make sure that the users can can get to to their uh, their sites. Um, and then at the macro level, it's all about seeing you know progress and things over time. So again, since it's about location, we need to see our is work getting done in these places. Again, do we have to send more resources, um, as I talked about about earlier there. Um, so you know that was was certainly helpful to us there. Um, and then one of the big things is that you know folks can get you know get more work done. Um, and you're going to get to see that here and how you know went from before where it was uh, you know took some time for folks to to dispatch these jobs out. And now they can get more work done in a shorter amount of time. So again, implementing this was, was really, really important to us. So um, now we're going to hop into the demo here. I'm going to turn on my screen sharing. So just uh, you know, bear with me for a second while we get this, this showing. And let me know when folks can see this, and I'll, uh, I'll get started. There we go. Okay. Looks good. Perfect. Um, so on the left-hand side here, um, you see I have our platform, our, our web-based platform, and the right-hand side is our device. Um, the scenario we're going to be do, looking at today is a vehicle repair company who has a list of work orders that they upload. So on the left-hand side, they have 82 work orders uploaded with all these details you'll see here. Um, and they need to complete these work orders um, in a timely fashion. So these are all different vehicle repairs. Um, I'm going to switch over to our map view here, and you're going to see um, the, the map here with a list of work orders that um, are currently assigned or unassigned. Um, and then the right-hand side, again, is, is the field workers on the device. So there may be many, many field workers out there, and we need to get, you know, get these, these vehicle repairs out to them. So I'm going to zoom in here just to the New York region, um, and I'm going to see there's two, two uh, repairs very, very close to each other. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to circle around these. And when we circle around these, we're going to use the, the polygon tool here. So this is one of the things that uh, Mapbox support helped us with implementing, and it was, was uh, you know, hugely in instrumental in this process. Um, and if we scroll down after we've selected those, we're going to see the details about these two work orders. So you know, we have the location of it, when these are created, a title, some descriptions, and when it's due. So we need to fix a BMW and a Volkswagen today. Um, so I'm going to go select those two items there. And then we can choose a for users in here, but we're going to assign it to the user J Miller. Now, when I click assign here, it's going to send that notification 
um, over to my mobile device here on the right hand side. So you'll see I just got um, two records that were notified sent to me. And I'm going to sync and I'm going to download these two entries. Um, once it downloads those, um, before I go on, I'm just going to hop back over here to our website. Um, so we can see that those two records are assigned to Jay Miller. Um, and I just circled right around those. And if we scroll over to some others, we're going to see, based on the legend, that these are assigned to different folks. So again, at the macro level, you can see um, you know, what records are assigned to what, what individuals. So now we'll hop over back to our device. So I, I received the record. And I'm going to open up my, my form here called iPhone Builder Work Order. And we're going to flip over to our map view in the bottom right. And obviously, I'm, I'm not right by these. So at this point, we're going to you know, have to get in our car, and we're going to have to drive over to this work site. So we'll drive all the way up here into downtown New York. And we're going to see we have two, two vehicle repairs to complete. So I'm just going to select one of those. And once I select one, it's going to open up our form. So right here is the core of um, you know, our iPhone Builder application um, on the mobile app. And you can see details such as when the work order was created, um, the title of it, the description of what we need to do, um, and when the work order is due. Um, and then you're going to see a little section down here called Enter Work Performed. Um, I'm going to open this up. And this is where I'm going to complete the bulk of what I'm, I'm working on today. So uh, first, I'm going to open up our location element. And I'm going to confirm my location. Um, we want to make sure that you are working in a relative vicinity of where the vehicle was repaired. We don't want to be you know, working from your home when you should be out in Manhattan there. Um, we're going to select a couple materials that we've used. So I used a wrench, a socket, and a, a jack there. Um, and then we're going to go in and we're going to type in you know, what, what we did on this vehicle. So I'm just going to put in some specific comments. Um, you know, folks can type it in here. You can, you can visually just speak into there and type down all the, all the things that you've done. Um, with this vehicle. So we'll say we repaired the drive line. The car is, uh, is now functioning. Um, and then we're going to hop into uh, you know, our, our drawing element here and take a photo of the work we did. Um, I don't have that BMW or that Volkswagen near me, so I'll take a picture of a nice uh, Z28 Camaro there for all you American muscle, muscle lovers. Um, and with our drawing element, we can draw over the, um, you know, the stuff that we worked on. So I'll circle the engine there. And then circle, you know, maybe underneath uh, the drive line area. So you can annotate on top of images there um, to to ensure that you know you're, you're pointing out the relevant pieces of information. Um, we're going to choose how many hours we worked for billing purposes, and uh, then finally sign off on this form. So again, this can fully be customized to your your custom workflow. This was um, you know customized for this this workflow itself. So once I hit done, we're going to see the number of hours worked. We worked uh, four total hours on this. Um, and then down at the bottom, we're going to you see a field called work completed. Um, so if, if your work's still in progress, you could actually you know, go ahead and assign this work order out to someone else. Maybe you need a, a more specific person to work on this. So I could assign it out to a different person who's, who specializes more in that, those American muscle cars. Um, in this case, the work order is completed. I fixed it, so we're just going to hit yes. And it's going to email this work order out um, to someone. This can be customized as well. I'm just emailing it to myself for demo purposes. Um, now, once you get back to connect, a connected environment, um, you can sync up this record like I did. And I still have one more left to work on. Um, now, going back to the map, um, again, I, I want to show that we can actually set up customized filters here. Um, so this is going to the macro level here, but you want to see um, you know, work completed is yes meaning I want to see any job that um, on this map that I have completed. So I just did that filter, and I see I've completed three different jobs here. Um, you know, one is, is assigned to field user one, one was assigned to myself, and one is, is unassigned. Um, now we can change this. Maybe you want to see everything that has not been completed. Um, again, very simple filter, um, but something we, we didn't have before. Um, now you can see you know, here's all the work that has not been completed. We know we need to send some folks up to, uh, up to the Canada region and uh, you know, into the Kentucky and Carolinas to, to complete those other items. Um, so what actually happens um, once it's submitted is you can get an email report of this. Um, again, this can be customized as well. I just put our logo up there for now. Um, you can see all the details about the work order, um, you know, description, and then the details that I completed there and four total hours worked. Um, so again, this is helpful in sending out notifications to folks um, based upon uh, you know, work, work completion. 
Um, so again, I mean, this this was the main thing I wanted to to show here today. But just to recap, we we circled a set of points in an area, and then we dispatched those out to a field user. Um, there may be one to many field users there, but once you dispatch that information out, they get it on their device and can complete it. So you can see how a large, you know, distributed set of uh, set of individuals could be assigned different work at different times in different regions, um, and you can complete things. Um, so this was really, really instrumental in um, helping helping our customers uh, you know, be able to complete these these tasks all over uh, all over the U.S. Um, so John, are there uh, there any questions as we uh, we wrap up this this part of the demo? Um, yeah, there's maybe maybe one. Uh, someone's asking if GPS units can be used to collect high accuracy field data. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so on your mobile device, um, you know, as long as the GPS unit can connect via Bluetooth or some other mechanism to the, the mobile device, um, it actually overrides the onboard GPS. Um, so it can feed data from there. Um, we have a couple different GPS units I can share um, after the call that folks have used in the past to connect. Um, but yeah, it depends on how, how high of accuracy you have to look at those specific devices. But, uh, but the answer is yes there. Yeah, that's everything for, for the live demo section. OK, perfect. All right, so um, next I just wanted to move into uh, what is next for, for on our roadmap here. Um, so there's there's three specific things I wanted to talk about here. Uh, first and foremost is, is web-based forms. Um, you know, for the longest time, folks have used the mobile devices, whether that be Android or iOS devices. Um, and you know, there's been a need for folks who are in the office to start utilizing these forms. Um, it doesn't really make sense for you know folks to use their their uh, their mobile device if they're in the office. They need to take full advantage of the screen. So we've developed a web forms um, application that you can fill out the same forms that I just showed you also on um, on your web. Um, in the workflow I showed, it probably wouldn't make sense because you know you're in a truck, you're driving out, fixing these vehicles. Um, but depending on your workflow, um, it makes sense for a lot of folks. Um, there's been two core needs that folks have utilized this for. Um, first was the need for office folks to initiate a workflow. Um, so maybe from the back end, um, you fill out a form and you want to send that form um, out to a mobile device. Um, that's one way folks have used it. Um, another one has been for, for data reviewing purposes. So as this data is submitted, such as all these, these vehicle inspections or uh, vehicle repairs, um, you may want to have someone go review them. And looking at it not on their phone, but on, um, on the web forms is probably a uh, you know, better use case there. Um, two pieces on the mapping end that um, you know, are, we're, we're really looking into are the ability to add your own custom layers into here. Um, so maybe that's you know, not, just, not just on the web side that I showed there, but uh, maybe that's also on the mobile side of things. So you want to put in your own custom layers to you know, overlay um, you know, population density or a set of, of work orders that you have with that. Um, so that's something that we're looking at at incorporating into our application. A variety of our customers have their own layers they want to, to bring to. Um, and then uh, something we're really excited about um, that, that goes hand in hand with the demo I just showed is route optimization. Um, so really what, what this is, I believe Mapbox released this about a year ago, but you know, we had two or three different points on our, uh, on our mobile map. Um, now this helps you know, from the, the office side sending those four, four points out to an individual. But when that person then in the field has to you know, figure out, how do I get to these three or four locations? What's the fastest way based on where I'm at now? Um, that's something that you know, we do not have an answer for. Um, but Mapbox um, does with their new route optimization features. So that's something we definitely want to incorporate next and let people plan the most, most optimal route. Um, we really believe this can, can save you know, driving time and give you more hours to work on uh, you know, the work that matters. Um, so if, if you liked what you saw here today or, or want to chat some more, um, you know, you can certainly email us at sales at Syrian Software or, uh, or visit SyrianSoftware.com to start a free trial. Um, you know, like I said, we work with a lot of different groups doing a lot of different customized workflows. Um, and we'd love to see you know, what, what problems we can solve uh, for you today, uh, specifically with maps as well. Um, so we wanted to, to hop into next uh, a short Q&A session um, if there's, there's any specific questions. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, thank you, Ben. Um, great presentation. It looks like a really solid product. Um, so we do have a, a few questions that came up, and uh, 
uh, folks attending. If uh, if anything else comes to mind, feel free to uh, to pop another question in. Um, so I have a question from Eric. Um, and it, oh, actually, I'm going to switch to a uh, question from Timothy first. Does the mobile yeah. application work offline? Uh, great question. Great question. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, so from the start, like I said, we started back in, in 2010. From the start, we built it to work offline. Um, e even though in today's day and age, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot better connectivity everywhere. Um, we built it to work offline. So what you do is you, when you download the forms, you have to download them all in an online connected environment. Um, and then once they are, are downloaded, you can go ahead and collect as much data as you want on the device. Um, and then you get back to a connected environment and, uh, and submit that information. So yes, uh, yes, absolutely. And as long as your device has cellular, we also get that location information. Or as long as it has a, a GPS chip in it, um, we get that location information uh, with captured with every record too. So good question. Uh, I also have a, a question from Frederick. Uh, and he is asking, how did you set up the work order locations prior to assignments? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so how I did that actually was, um, let me just go back to my, my screen sharing here. I think this will make a little more sense. Um, so what I did was since we uploaded it into the system here, I actually uploaded it into um, one of our location elements. So if you can see my screen here, maybe I can zoom in a little bit. Um, we uploaded it into our location element here. So um, since I had it latitude and longitude, I simply uploaded it, and then I can plot it on the map based upon um, this latitude and longitude in this field here. Um, and then once, once you do that, then you, know, then you can assign them out to the device from there. Um, but yes, this was just through a simple CSV upload. Cool. Um, we have a, a question from David. Can you define your locations as lines and or polygons? Um, so right now we just support points. Um, we have done a, uh, we did do a webinar where um, one of our other individuals, Or Dushevsky, um, uh, we'll point that link over to you then um, afterwards, uh, does show how, how we are able to work with lines um, and, and make a line uh, GeoJSON file, I believe. Um, but right now, yes, we do just support points out of the box. Um, it does take a little more work if you want to work with with lines or polygons as well, um, but you know, love to hear the use case and see, and that's something you know we definitely would uh, you know like to to improve and, and add to the product. Great. Uh, a question from Zifeng Li: Does the on-site technician use the tool as well, or just the manager in the office? Um, yes. Yeah, so, so what I was showing was um, you know uh, the, the manager. Uh, in the office also uses it, but then we send it out to the mobile device. So on the right side of my screen earlier, I showed uh, showed the mobile device there. So yes, it is it is both. Um, there is a collaboration there in the workflow that I that I showed. Great. Um, and then we do have a, a question from Eric. Uh, do you have any integration with Maximo WOM work order management? Um, no, we do not. Um, but how how you would do this? I didn't mention this earlier. Is that we do have a, a pretty robust API um, where you can basically integrate our software um, bidirectionally with with any of these other software. So um, we know folks have have worked with Maximo in the past. I believe um, if if it runs on top of SQL Server, we have a direct link to SQL Server. Um, so if we can get that data into SQL Server, um, you know, we can use it through there. Or you know, utilizing if Maximo work order management has uh, you know an API, uh, we can write write code or or you can write code to to integrate with it. Cool. Um, another question: what what kind of file format is needed to upload your own layers? Um, so right now we we do not um, allow uploading of our own layers. So that's something we you know we are thinking and we'd love to hear. Um, from you, what what types of files you'd like us to support for layer, uh, for layers specifically? So I know you know there's a lot of different shape files, um, GeoJSON, um, or even you know just uploading CSV to make make a layer. Um, that's effectively kind of what what I did here, at least to make make a, a database. 
Um, so yeah, we don't we don't support that yet, but that's something we'd love to to hear what what types of uh, you know form, file formats you have, and, and that's what we want to integrate with. Great. Um, I have a question. Uh, this again from from Eric. How how long did it take to develop the application? And, and maybe this is, you know, more the Mapbox integration than the general application, or maybe you'd want to answer both parts. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, I, I guess my answer to that would be a couple months at least. I mean, we, we weren't working on it 100% um, all the time in there. We had a, a team, a, a small team, work on this. Um, so, you know, probably from start to finish, I think six months or so. Um, and you know, throughout that, it was it was very you know agile. We were working with. With the customers who we build it for, and seeing you know what did we miss something here? Do we need to add more things here? So um, you know, some time there now, depending on what we do, it, it could be you know faster or, or longer. But yeah, I think I think about six months um, is what it took. Great. Um, great. Uh, I guess one one more question from Darius. Uh, for sorting the table, is there a, a master checkbox to select or deselect all elements? Um, yes, there is. Uh, if you're talking about sorting the the map, um, you're able to do that. Um, at the top, we did have a checkbox. I I, I, know I went through it pretty quickly, quickly, but I did check the select all there. Um, mm -hmm. So then that uh, you know that's that selected every every record. Um, you're saying select all elements. Um, and maybe I'll have to get some more insight of that and we can can chat after I'll reach out to you, Darius, um, on that specific question. Sounds good. And then uh, there's one last question. Um, another one just popped in. But there's a, a question from Jim. Uh, and this may be specific to iPhone builder. How are the number of map views counted? If not, um, maybe so, a, yeah, no, great question, great question. Um, so no, the number of map views are counted. I mean, using using how Mapbox counts uh, views. Now that is, um, you know, something that they are are removing here coming up in November. So we are going to be switching to um, map loads, um, which you know should be a, a much easier metric to track and things there. So um, you know, for more information, that is on uh, Mapbox's uh, website. There, I think they have some pretty good tools on how to you know, see how many map views versus map loads you are utilizing. Great. Um, another uh, question from Frederick. I'm currently using iForm Builder and have not seen a CSV upload option. Is this a feature that's not accessible within a, a general iForm Builder account? Um, no, good question. So uh, yes, it absolutely is. Um, available in, in all of our accounts here. So I am turning on my screen sharing again here, so it may take just a second. But um, when you're inside of our, our data table, so here's you know, here's the data table of the 82 work orders that we have. Um, there is an option to upload CSV right here. Um, and you know basically, you just match the column names, and you upload that information um, into there. So that'll be right up here um, in your data views. Um, it is only accessible to administrators, so maybe if you are a basic user and may not have access, that could be why you, you're not seeing it. Great. Um, we have a, another question. Is there a timeline when offline maps and layers will be up and running? Um, so for both of those, I, I cannot give you a timeline on there. I mean, we, we operate um, pretty much in, in one month sprints. So when, when stuff is available, it is available. Um, you know, we are are doing um, different advisory group sessions and things like that um, that that help drive our product. So I'd encourage you to you know to, to participate in those. Um, you know, push on our community there. We, we take um, question or take features from our community and the number of, of support they have and, and build off that. Um, so as as those things become um, you know more of a priority, we'll, we'll definitely you know, let let folks know on that. Great. So uh, that's all the questions we had for today. Once again, uh, thank you everyone for joining us um, and hope you have a great day. All right. Thanks everyone.